All right, hey everyone, Wanderbot here, and welcome to Birthdays the Beginning. It's like a sandbox evolution type game. It's weird. Anyway, there's lots of stuff I don't know. The stuff that everyone knows is just a small piece of the, this mysterious world. I don't know what Birthdays the Beginning exactly is, but they sent it to me, and it looked fun, so I'm going to try it out. So my grandpa loved to read and owned lots of books. Too many to count. When I was a kid, I used to borrow his books in secret and read them. All right, well, I guess that's that. Uh, let's see if we can mess with the options a little bit. Yeah, windowed mode, 1920 by 1080, ugh. All right, let's switch it to uh, full screen mode. Thank you very much. Can I up my um, cursor? It doesn't look like it. Well, that's fine. Okay, so let's set this, save, and let's do a new, new game. So I've heard that this game's a little bit complicated. Uh, it might take a little bit of getting used to, so one day, a day like any other day, I was reading a book when an old scrap of paper fell out. It looked like a small map, specifically a map of this area, and in the forest a spot had been marked. Maybe it's a treasure map. A childish notion, I know. I had no way of knowing if the map was real or not, but it didn't seem too far away, so away I went. Pockets of sunlight seeped through the dense canopy of trees, dimly shining my way as... I walked through the dark forest, and right when I thought, I think this is the spot. A beam of light appeared before me. At that moment, I wanted to run, but my feet wouldn't budge. So there I stood, and then, as if beckoning me, the light began to move. And my feet responded in kind. I felt like a puppet. There was nothing I could do. I eventually arrived at the entrance to a cave. The light continued into the cave, and my feet continued after it. Shortly after, I lost consciousness. The end. Game over. Thanks for watching, everybody. When I woke up, there was a giant cube before me. Next to it, a smaller cube-like object, and a creature I had never seen before. And with that, the strangest incident of my life had begun. Welcome to this unknown world! I don't have a name yet, but if you want, you can call me Navi! Hey, listen! That red guy is your avatar. You can give it any name you want. Okay, what is our name? Our name is Dude! Is that okay? Yes. Okay. For a long time, my job has been to birth life on worlds such as this one. But lately, things haven't gone right. I know everything about this world, but I can't do anything on my own. So I called upon you. I'm sure... You don't understand, but trust me, you're a chosen one. You seem confused. I just need help. That's all. I'm sure you won't let me down. If life can be birthed on this world, I can finally complete my task. And then you can return to your world. Together, we can move forward. It's our only option. First things first, you need to know the rules of this world. Now let's begin. Alright, so this might have a long tutorial. We'll figure it out. As you s uh, Do you see that red square? That's the cursor. It can highlight various things. When raising and lowering terrain, the cursor will be the center point. You can also specify an area to use items. Now, let's try moving first. Use the left stick to move the cursor where you'd like. You can move in any direction this way. If you hold left trigger at the same time, you'll move even faster. You can also use left bumper to change your point of view. Hold left bumper down, uh, move the right stick to zoom in and out. I guess I'm gonna need a controller for this. Okay. You see that small map at the top right? That's the mini map. There's a location highlighted in the red of the minimap. Why don't you head over there? All right, everything seems okay. While we're at it, I'll explain the minimap. The minimap displays a bird's eye view of the entire cube. Red dot is your location. And the distribution of life and the condition of the land is also displayed. It might look drab now, but it'll get more lively if you do well. The direction of the red dot is pointing represents the direction you're facing. Next, we should move the train. You're probably wondering why. Well, it's part of birthing life on this world. Press right bumper on the area selected. When you press right trigger, the area selected by the cursor will lower. You can also do something like this. By raising and lowering the terrain, you can influence the world's environment. Basically, raising the land will decrease its temperature, and lowering the land will increase it. This change in temperature will be displayed in the minimap. However, 
Temperature fluctuations are affected by other variables besides terrain elevation. By raising and lowering terrain, you shape the environment. In doing so, new life will be born that is suited for various environments. When a life form thrives and its population increases, you can birth new types of life. Repeating this cycle will allow you to birth various life forms. Now, let's try raising and lowering the terrain. Press right bumper to raise, right trigger to lower, hold down either button for sustained raising and lowering. Also, you can use the left stick to move while you're raising and lowering the terrain. Sweet space elevator. How do I go up and down? I have no idea. Expand controls. Okay. Oh, I see. I have square based movement. Okay, so how do we. How do we bigger? Controlling the terrain. Okay, so that's one. How do I expand my cursor? I have no idea. Okay. I guess I'll just mess around with stuff for a bit. Looks like you've run out of HP. You can heal lost HP in macro mode, but I'll heal you just this once. How's HP work? There are other ways to control the land. One way is by using item. You see that yellow dot on the mini map? That represents an item. Head over there and obtain the valley source. You need to you you just need to go near it. I'll show you how to use it. Good job. This item will dig a big hole in the ground. Press A to open the item menu and X to use it. Use the valley source to move the terrain. This may be a bother, but I'd like to put two of those three in a specific location. The locations are marked red on the minimap. You can put at least one where you wherever you want. Okay, so we want to do A, X, Valley Source. Oh, so that's how we do it. Okay. A, X. Okay, so we end up with two of these. This is different. And then the last one... What if I use it, like, right here? Huh. Okay, so that flattens... Flattens the land. What do you think? Useful, huh? There are lots of useful items, but right now I have something more important to tell you. So I have to tell you about the sea. It's the birthplace of all life. You can create water using the primordial drop. This is how it all starts. Try the primordial drop in the hole you made in the valley source. Okay, well I'm just gonna raise this back up, seeing as it's kind of a weird problem. Oh, interesting! It didn't correct the entire mountain. Well, okay. Anyway, we want to do a... There we go. So that's, that's a water level that we can work with. It's water! Congratulations! This is the first of what I hope will be many birthdays. In this world, this large pool of water you created is called the sea. On the cursor status to the right, you can see the height is in the negatives. Everything in the negatives is the sea. That is a rule of this world. It's almost time for life to be born. Ha! If only things were that simple. But waiting around is pretty boring, so let's use an item to speed this up. Ta-da! The broth of life. This amazing item creates organisms without fail, but you have to use it in the sea. After all, that's the birthplace of all life. Now all we have to do is wait for life to be born, but right now time is frozen. If time flowed normally while you tried to work, things could turn bad real quick. So here's another important rule. Time only passes when you watch the world unfold from a distance. So try pressing Y. Now you can watch the world from a distance. You can adjust the distance with the right stick. This is called macro mode, and is very important. It's how you unfreeze time. When time passes, the cube's environment will change with each passing moment. And when the cube in, uh, cube's environment has fulfilled a condition, life will be born into the world. Let time pass and watch what happens. Press life bump, uh, left bumper to unfreeze time. Go ahead, try it. Okay, so phytoplankton has showed up. So this is going to be... I guess real life as opposed to fantasy life. That's kind of unfortunate. I love to play this game where like all of the creatures being born are like crazy monsters and stuff. But I guess this does mean we get to make dinosaurs. Another happy birthday. Congratulations. It's phytoplankton. This is said to be the original life form. Life news is displayed on the right. You can see new displayed next to phytoplankton. This is how you'll find out 
When new life forms are born, make sure you don't miss a single birthday. The cube status will show you information about this world. Temperature fluctuations, flora and fauna status, tear in proportion, stuff like that. Oh yeah! I need to show you the mechanics of birthing life. Temperature is the most important factor of life being born. Generational and geographical change matters too, but the most important part by far is temperature. Now, the ratio of land to sea determines the temperature. The more land there is, the lower the temperature, and the more sea there is, the higher the temperature. Elevations also factor, higher elevations make lower temperatures and vice versa. If you remember that, will you shape the terrain, various life forms will be born. I mentioned before, you can progress time, but I'll tell you something more useful. At the bottom of the screen, you can change the speed, we already know that. Starting time will heal your HP, while fast forwarding will consume it. Now, let's try fast forwarding time. Press left trigger. So, cube year. So, we've gone up to like 20, 30,000. Okay, it's micro mode. Oh, micro mode is. is getting up close. Okay. So, if I just start time. Oh, I see. So, we heal real fast. Okay, and now we have zooplankton. And it tells us what year, or how long ago it was. A new species has been born. That makes three birthdays now. Expect to see a lot more. As a reward, I'll heal your HP. Now, what was born was zooplankton, the first multicellular organism. It eats phytoplankton to survive. This is the first link in the food chain. Let me explain a little bit more about life forms. Sometimes the environment can no longer support certain species when they begin to increase in number. When that happens, the species will adapt to the environment and, through evolution, a new sh species will be uh, born. Sometimes one species will appear because another has gone extinct. Life sure is mysterious, isn't it? After the third life form is born, you can continue on. I don't know why I'm adding an L to born. You can zoom in and change the terrain and do all kinds of stuff. Then, just go to macro mode and let time unfold again. If you're ever not sure what to do, press the right stick for a hint. Use it whenever the need arises. Okay, well, let's fast forward for a little bit more, see if anything happens. Okay. Let's go into micro mode for a second, seeing as we're kind of limited here. So let's go up to this. Crunch it down a bunch. Let's, um... Let's mess around for a little while. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if, uh... Oops. Oh, these controls are weird. Can I... Oh, nope. Okay, let's move that up a bit. There we go. Oh, we don't have enough HP. Okay. So we gotta start time, recover HP for a little bit. At least HP is not really something we have to worry about. We just start time and then come back. I guess, um, maybe, maybe once we have bigger creatures. Make zooplankton multiply to birth stomalite. Photoplankton release a lot of oxygen that zooplankton need. Okay, so... Oops. Let's crank this down. I guess my giant mountain here is not helping anybody. Do I have any... I don't have any items I can use. Do I? Nah. I wonder what the trigger is for taking damage here. I love the texturing. Like, the texturing actually reminds me a lot of, uh, of Dragon Quest Builders, actually. I don't know how many of you guys saw that series of mine, but the I absolutely adore voxels that are not just, like, pixely. Like, hand-painted voxels are really pretty. Yep. Uh, let's get back out. I'll finish this soon. But yeah, this stupid mountain that we've got here is kind of messing light, messing with us. Uh, let's see. I guess what we could do in the future is go with kind of like islands and stuff. In 
seems like the more water we have, generally the better. Okay, so now we wanna... Now we wanna start feeding our OCD here. I, I like the, like, weird ziggurat. But the weird ziggurat has issues. Okay. I really wish there were easier ways to control this to some degree. Like, I see what they're kind of trying to do with the controller, and it actually makes some sense. But it's a bit of a pain. Okay. Why'd the air temperature go down? I have no idea. It's also weird having an HP bar, period. So this is 53, and if I go up here... You know, I have... No idea. I'm gonna be saying that over the course of this series a lot. Just... What? Okay, we actually want to bring it back a little bit further. Because... Why is it saying 32 degrees to 38 degrees? I have no clue. Uh... Let's see, but yeah, it would be nice if I could paint with broader strokes. I guess that's what items are for. But we'll have to leave that for later. Uh, let's see. Yeah. It. Oh, there we go. Stomalite. Okay, we have enough. Oh, those are counts, not when they showed up. Wow, another species was born. Another birthday to celebrate. This is Stroma to light, a rock-like organism made of algae that lives in high temperature shallows. Why was Stromalite born, you ask? Because the location met the conditions for life, therefore it was born. That means you you can expect them to thrive in these conditions too. Location factors all sorts of variables, such as temperature, temperature, height, terrain, and more. You might want to zoom in and look for hints. Now you know the three important factors for birthing life. Temperature, life form, prosperity, extinction, and location. These three factors have a deep connection with the birth of this world. When life is born, other life might go extinct. Life forms that cannot adapt will die off. Life forms that are in danger of going extinct will display a exclamation mark in life news. These explanations are getting lengthy, please, but please bear with me. Press Y to enter the world. Zoop. And we're back. Yes, this screen is micro mode. Micro, macro, and micro may seem similar, but don't mix them up. Now that we've talked about the minimap before, the minimap will display the position of all organisms in this world. Items appear as yellow, but animals and plants are displayed as colored dots. Try looking for the stromatolite that was just born. Its display is a pink dot. New life forms will be recorded in your library. This act is known as capturing. If you approach an organism you haven't captured yet, a pink triangle will appear. Click the touchpad button, I don't have one of those, to capture the life form and add it to your life library. This information can be viewed at any time. Organism info will be displayed in the window. Now give it a try. So we get over here and... Okay, so it's select on an Xbox controller. Amateur, pho amateur photographer. So we got stromatolite, an algae native to very hot shallows. Utilizes photosynthesis to convert carbon dioxide into oxygen. So vitality D, evolution B, trophic level D, psi C, adaption and fertility SS, rarity star, shallows, birth damp, okay. And we level up. Oh, that gets us a lot more HP, well that's handy. Congratulations on leveling up. Now there's one other benefit to capturing. It's how you obtain EXP. EXP is used to power up your avatar. The more you capture, the more EXP you gain to level up your avatar. You'll gain more H uh, HP for creating terrain and you can adjust the size of the cursor, too. Use left and right directional buttons to adjust the cursor size. When life is born, find it and capture it. This process is very important. That's right, there's a view mode that is a different point of view than micro mode. It's useful for getting a wide view of the surrounding area, and it has another useful function, too. In view mode, the minimap displays organisms that haven't been captured yet. You'll find out why that's convenient soon enough. The controls in view mode are simple. Use left stick to move, and right stick to look around. You can also use the directional buttons to move. Movement varies based on the left stick and directional buttons and whatever suits you best. In view mode, you can operate or lower the terrain. However, you can ascend with the right, right bumper and descend with the right trigger. That's all I have to say for now. Go ahead and give it a try. Let's stick to switch between micro mode and view mode. 
Oh, so view mode is like first person. How was it? Huh? Oh, you're sad because there's nothing there. Like I said, the world is pretty much in your hands. Now, let's return to macro mode. Whoo, tutorial. Do you understand how this world works now? Before you move on, there's one more thing I'd like to teach you. If you press start, you can change the control settings, adjust the volume, save your data. Extinction is usually a natural part of life, but if you have to save data... Huh? What am I talking about? Well, never mind. Let's move on. To birth a new species, you need more stromatolites. If zooplankton is present, that means there are shallows uh, negative one to negative three. If you enter flat terrain on the stromatolites... Oh, center flat terrain on the stromatolites, it'll be easier for them to flourish. They have an easier time increasing in wide areas. This is true for all organisms, so make sure to remember that. Now, try widening the shallows. Your goal is a thousand. First, I'm fixing this freaking mountain thing. Okay, there we go. Oh, this is gonna make my life so much easier. Okay, so we gotta be a bit careful, because we don't wanna... And luckily, we don't have much of a... There we go. We don't have much messing with this here. Oh. There's multiple there. But yeah, I have to be careful with the uh, the broad strokes here. Because they don't exactly work the way you want them to. Uh, let's just lower all these things down. I have the hardest time just moving up and down. Oop, still no items. Oh, well, that's okay. It'd be nice if I could use the, uh, the D-pad for maneuvering here. But I totally understand that we need control st <laughs> Okay, seriously, why is this so hard? <laughs> Okay, there we go. I can't always get where I want to go, and it's bothering me. Oh, shoot. And I did that wrong, too. Ah. Okay. These are odd controls. I'd say I hope they fix them up, but this is a Japanese game, so I'm not entirely sure if we're even going to get that luxury. Okay, so let's... Lower all these down. Okay. Yeah, I don't get to play a whole lot of Japanese indie games. And a lot of them tend to be uh, games that I wouldn't normally cover to begin with. So it's kind of an odd... Odd situation for me playing this game. I like it, though. It's... Uh, it's... It's interesting. Maybe not something I'd play on a... Uh, generally. But now that I've done... A decent amount of YouTubing, the game games like this kind of appeal to me. Oh, we gotta go back to We gotta go back to this mode. Heal back up. Okay. Let's see. I really wish the controls were just a little bit uh smoother along the way here. Okay, so let's shrink this down by one. I do like the fact that you can um I, I do like the fact that you can easily just kind of come through things here. And like if you if you're just holding down a button in a direction you can kind of auto sculpt the ground. I I appreciate that feature. I just wish it was easier to turn around and stuff. Cause this doesn't quite have grid based movement. Um uh -oh. it like it does, but uh turning around works odd. Mainly, I can't turn the character without moving. There we go. Okay. So they wanted more shallows, right? I guess... I guess I'm just going to extend this out. He did say, or Navi did say that uh, negative one to negative three. So we might want to actually, uh... Huh.
This seems reasonable. Okay. Oh shit, yeah. Ah, crap, we don't have enough HP. Okay, well that was bad. Uh, <laughs> okay, well we are getting a fair bit more stroma, stroma double head of Can I use my mouse for this? Oh, I can. Well, this might actually be a lot easier. Okay. I, like, I might be able to use my mouse and keyboard for this a lot more smoothly. Uh-oh. Okay, so the click and drag doesn't work here. However, if I just do this... I'm gonna have to switch back and forth between keyboards... ...and... I'm gonna have to switch back between keyboard and mouse for this game? That is weird. Uh, between keyboard, mouse, and controller. I'm not used to that sort of thing. Oh, do we have another... ...Stromada Wadaba? I think we do. Okay. Crank these down a little bit. I'm not entirely sure if I'm lining them up right. Oh, I see. I see what I did. Oh, that's okay. Who are you? Okay, that's that's more Stromanabahabadaba. Probably should have memorized their name properly, but whatever. Okay, so that's enough. We've got our little mountain ziggurat and the awkward music note that uh, that is our first planet. All right, let's turn time on. Congratulations, nice job. Here's a small present. It's called a seed of life. The next step is to birth a new organism. If you use the seed of life, an organism suited to that location will be born. Use this item to create a new organism. Cyclomedusa. Cyclomedusa are basically an ancestral jellyfish. They live in high temperature seas and float along the water surface, eating plankton. Approach the strom Tolites and use the seed of life. Okay. I really like the music for this game, though I wish it was a little bit more consistent between macro and other bo other mode. Okay, well, let's just use it. So does that just evolve forcibly evolve them? Now go back to macro mode and let time unfold. Okay, so zooplankton is fluctuating a little bit. I mean, it seems like they're doing great. We're getting plenty of stromatolites. Interestingly enough, we can only see them. Zooplankton and phytoplankton are too small for us to actually be able to see. Seed of mutation is emerged in the cube. Wait, hold on. What? I'm gonna just throw things at everything. That'll be okay. Okay, so left stick. Oh, jeez. Uh, I don't know why this is the case, but uh, looking left and right is actually reversed here. Also, it looks like we're starting to get some basic vegetation on the ground too, which is kind of neat. Okay, whatever. Uh, let's go back out. Let's go back. Go back. I can't. Oh, I see. We were in the item menu for whatever reason. Okay, well, I guess we'll just let time go and then we'll just speed up time and maybe mutation will lead to things. Otherwise, I just screwed up everything. I don't know. Okay, there we go. Cyclomedusa. Everything's going smoothly. Here, here's a seed of mutation, uh, evolution. This item induces evolution in organisms. By using it on a life form, you can turn it into its evolved form. I really wish this actually had fantasy creatures because I'd love to have you know, either Pokemon or Digimon or other kinds of, like, monster collection style evolution. So slick. Anyway, use the seed of evolution to make a Kalunia out of the Stromolite. Kalunia is a seaweed from the Protoz Proterozoic era. First, enter micro mode, then find, a, find one. Cursor over it, seed of evolution. Actually, even if you don't use the seed, it will appear under the right conditions. If you can birth an organism without using items, something good might happen later. Anyway, once you 
Bertha Colunia, you can move on. Okay, so we have a little new guy. We've captured him. Okay. Oh, it's adorable. Vitality D, Fertility SS, Evolution SS, Adaption S, Size C, Terrific Level B, Population Height C, Primitive Jellyfish that float through very hot seas, Consuming Plankton, like we found near stromolo, uh, Stromatolites. Okay, we got another seed of mutation. I could wait, but I think for the time being I'm just gonna throw the uh, seed of evolution on one of these guys. Later on, we'll mess around with, um... Uh... Later on, I'm gonna mess around with, uh... I guess, free mode. Oh, and we got a Kalunia already. Happy birthday! Kalunia was born! Good job! Here are three seeds of evolution. There's a limit to the number of items you can hold, so use them carefully. Next, I want you to birth an Elrathia. Do you know what a trilobite is? Uh, Elrathia is an ancient trilobite. It's an arthropod that swims and scuttles along the ocean floor. The conditions for birth are as follows. Shallows of roughly 48 degrees Celsius and a minimum of 5,400 cyclomedusa. You can easily birth a species using an item, but it might be better to shape the terrain. Okay, so we've got this. Uh, birth temp, 43 to 53, population 480, height, shallows, adaption. Okay, a seaweed that lives in very hot shallows alongside stromatolites can be found after breeding Cyclomedusa. And we've leveled up so we get even more HP. E. Oops, what am I doing? Pressing the wrong buttons, that's, that's for certain. Okay, interesting enough, it's red for some reason. Well, that's okay. Anyway, let's start time. Uh-oh. They've gone extinct already. So that's why they were red. I wonder. Okay. So we need Cyclomedusa. Oh. Is it because I used one over here? Okay, well I got some items. What do we got? Seed of Mutation, Seed of Evolution. I'm just gonna throw things at things. We'll figure it out. Okay. The oceans are pretty dang warm, right? Could be warmer. Okay. Fine. Let's boost this temperature a bit. Uh, let's see. This is probably... Uh, I'm just gonna connect these two oceans. Seems to work out. We heard like a weird... Oh! It's because I summoned a creature. Or not a creature, an item. Okay, I'm just gonna mess around with like weird shapes and stuff like that. Uh, let's go down. Ah. Uh, and here's where I realized my like carefully crafted ocean. Nope. Okay, it's like slightly off off center, which is kind of annoying, but whatever. I'm just gonna mess around with design stuff. Lower as much into the ocean as possible. Actually, while we're here, we can actually just dump this entire section in the ocean. That's one way to crank the heat up around here. There we go. Yeah, if you notice, we're actually like one block off center here, which is kind of annoying. Oh well, anyway, we should be good now. Let's just, uh, let's recover our HP a little bit and s see if Bergwanthia, okay, showed up, plus some other things. Alright, whatever, stuff will happen, uh, okay, shit's happening, okay, we got Cyclomedusa again, 
God, the, everything is happening. Okay, let's stop. I should probably slow down, slow this down a hot second because things just happened. Okay, captured. We've got Bara Guanathea. So, a plant that grows on land as Calunia and Cyclomedusa proliferated throughout the sea. This species began to adapt to life on land. Okay, so you suckers, what's wrong with you guys? Okay, Avatar status, cube status, library. So what's wrong with you guys? Birth temp, adaption temp. They seem to be fine, they just keep dying off for whatever reason. Okay, we've got another one of these guys. I think... Is there something up with this one? Oh! Nope, this is Asteroxylon. Asteroxylon. Uh, Barrig Quanthea that underwent a mutation and migrated to the plains where water is scarce. Okay. Any other critters I don't know of around here? Actually, we could go into, um... We go into this mode. Looks like we've scanned everything. I mean, worst comes to worst, we're going to be able to scan everything at a much later date anyway. Okay, let's start time back up again. Okay, I should probably go check up where the Elrathia is. Oh! Happy birthday! Elrathia is born! Great! Looks like you're getting the hang of this. You finally made it this far. Now it's time to move from water to dry land. You must birth the first organism to move to land, Baraguanthea. It's almost time. If this goes well, you'll be able to return to your world. This is the type of fern that breeds on land. Traveling far from its birthplace is the first life form that migrated to land. Low land of 41 degrees Celsius, minimum 6,000 colonia, moisture 15%. These are the conditions for birth. Here are three small recovery leaves. Just as a token of my appreciation, now let's begin. Well, I've already, I've already got it. So I think we just have to start time again. But I wanted to see, where's this new creature? Ah, it's over here. Oh, it's kind of booking it. What is it? Type of, oh, it's a trilobite. A trilobite native to high temperature shallows. It scuttles along the ocean floor and lives among Colunia. I should probably get my cursor out of here. It's kind of useless. Though, I guess we're about to end the episode, so I don't know. Anyway, uh... Is that enough? You good? Finally, you've birthed a Baraguanthea. Just capture it and you're home free. Until then, you're free to do as you please. So just capture it whenever you're ready. So this is goodbye then? What? Oh, nothing. No, go on. You did it! Mission complete. Our time together was brief, but I'm grateful to you. I couldn't have done it on my own. Now go back to your world. Episode clear! Alright! The cube is born. Cleared without using a seed of evolution, captured a nine-star organism, captured all possible organisms. Yeah, okay, so I could have actually done more than that. Free play mode is available, and that's that. Is this all a dream? No, it can't be. After all, I'm in a cave right now. I should hurry home, I thought, as I followed the light. But when I stepped outside, I couldn't believe my eyes. The trees before me resembled thick ferns, and were clearly different from the trees I'd walked by previously. What's going on? Have I been taken to another world? Perhaps I should take a look around. Ha <laughs> ha! Anyway, what? Back already? Kidding. You worked hard to birth a land plant, but I guess it wasn't enough. Since I can't do anything on my own, I guess you'll have to help me out some more. Prosperity is the gold now. You're going to make the land teem with life. You know about dinosaurs, right? They're famous organisms that roamed your world long ago. Your goal is to birth dinosaurs. If you get that far, I'm sure something will happen. This world, though, it's too small to birth dinosaurs. I've expanded it somewhat, so the ratio of land to water has changed significantly. That means the temperature has likely lowered, so expand the sea to adjust the temperature. All right, but instead... Oh, hold on. Huh? Why so glum? Maybe you're not happy, but I sure am. To celebrate our reunion, select an item that you want from the menu and press Y. Use the up and down buttons. Yeah, there we go. You still seem glum. Here, take these. It's a small rain cloud and a strong sunlight. Small rain clouds will increase the moisture in a selected area. Sunlight, decreased moisture in the selected area. They're very useful items. You don't need them? Aw, oh, come on, don't be that way. I guess you're still in a bad mood. Well, you can have the river source then too. It's also very useful. You can use the river source on any flat line, and as long as it's 1T tall and 3x3, three three, otherwise it won't work. 
What'll happen, I wonder? Give it a try and find out. Okay, so for starters, can I save? Yes, I can. Perfect. We're gonna save, and then we're gonna call this episode over. This game's actually really interesting. It's gonna be, I, as far as I can tell, it's gonna be forced tutorials for the next couple, uh, couple missions, episodes, whatever. But at the same time, it is actually super charming. I like the idea of a, uh, a sandbox life simulator and stuff like that. I've been playing a lot of things like Spore lately, and well, I, I've already made my complaint known, I'd like to make it again. I just want to play one of these, well, I mean, this game, Spore, whatever, just like, deeper, and with like, really interesting, unique creatures. Same thing with, I guess, No Man's Sky and whatever. Because like, I keep seeing games like this, No Man's Sky, Spore, a bunch of other ones that kind of like, come close to having this cool environment simulator, and then they just go with real monsters, uh, real creatures, not monsters. Well, I guess dinosaurs, I guess, are sort of real monsters. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, yeah, complaint done. Confused and done, and I'll probably complain about it more. Uh, but either way, I had a lot of fun playing this. It's it's charming. It's, it's charmingly simple, I guess, in a, a relaxing way. This is definitely the kind of game that I want to load up. Uh, when I'm tired and I just don't want to think about things and I'm just like, let's just make this like really, really nice little ocean uh, planet and then fill it with dinosaurs. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if we get to make the like really ridiculous like seaborne dinosaurs and stuff like that. I know I know there's T-Rexes in this game. I've heard my friends talking about it. I'm excited. Anyway, I guess with that, I'll see you guys in the next episode of Birthdays the Beginning. But before I go, if you guys like this episode in any way, shape or form, leave me a like helps more than you know. And if you want to see more, let me know, but mainly hit subscribe, because I'm I'm going to be doing multiple episodes of this for sure. Because uh, this is right up my, my need for a relaxing game alley. So, yeah, I guess with that, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.